welcome back to another session of our matter in our surroundings part 2 before we proceed to today's session let us quickly have a recap of our previous class so in the previous class we have understood that everything around us is matter right matter is anything that has mass and occupies volume or certain amount of space we also learned that matter is made up of very small particles these particles they are continuously moving particles have spaces between them and particles exert a force of attraction on each other particles attract each other right so the topic for today's session is very easy and very interesting we are going to ask a couple of basic questions the first question is in what form is matter present in our nature how do we see matter that is your states of matter the different forms and as you already know in general matter exists in three states solid liquid and gaseous state right other than this there are also two more states the fourth state of matter is plasma which is seen in the sun and there is fifth state of matter called as the Bose-Einstein condensation we will be discussing only the three commonly observed states of matter solid, liquid and gas so that is the answer to our first question the second question is why are some things solid why some others exist in the liquid form and why some others are present as gases have you ever wondered about it if you have let us discuss the answer the answer lies in the nature of the particle okay so if you draw your attention to this corner of the board i have drawn the diagrams of particles of a solid a liquid and a gas right now what you have to focus here are three important properties of particles that is spaces between the particles force of attraction between the particles and their kinetic energy their continuous motion if you understand this the difference between solid liquid and gas is very very easy to understand okay in the first diagram you observe that particles are very closely packed they are very compactly arranged which means that spaces in between the particles in a solid is least is very very less they are compactly arranged because they are so closely packed the force of attraction is very high is very strong and due to these two factors particles are not free to move here and there they have got very less kinetic energy due to this particles are this particular form of matter is a solid they have a definite shape and they have a definite boundary moving on to particles in a liquid particles in a liquid you can see they have some more spaces when compared to a solid the spaces between the particles is slightly more due to which force of attraction will be slightly lesser and the kinetic energy will be comparatively higher than a solid so they exist as liquids liquids as you know they are fluid in nature 
fluid anything that moves can be called as a fluid liquids are fluid in nature but they have a definite boundary they maintain a definite boundary because the kinetic energy is not very high for them to escape wherever they want they have certain amount of force of attraction which keeps the particles within the boundaries but they can move around because they have got spaces in between them coming to the third form of matter why are certain forms of matter present as gases because as you can see in the diagram the interparticular space the spaces between the particles is very high due to which the force of attraction is very less the force of attraction is very less so particles can freely move away randomly they can move wherever they want they have high kinetic energy so they don't have a particular boundary neither do have a particular shape so that is why they are present as gases so the existence of the three forms of matter is due to the three properties of particles of matter higher the space higher the kinetic energy they are gases lesser the space lesser the kinetic energy they are solids in between the spaces are moderate kinetic energy is also moderate force of attraction is also moderate matter exists as liquids so these are the three differences between solids liquids and gases very easy right now other than these three properties of solids liquids and gases we can also discuss a few more properties that i have mentioned here right so the first one is shape how does a solid look like how does a liquid look like and what does a gas look like shape as you have already understood from the discussion a few while ago solids they have a fixed shape they have a definite shape why because they have a definite boundary and another very important thing to observe here is the order of arrangement of particles it is highly ordered there is a orderly arrangement of particles so because of this solids are rigid rigid meaning particles are not free to move here and there they are rigid they are not fluid so that is with regards to the shape of a solid liquid as you know the shape is not fixed liquids do not have their own shape for example i take a duster a duster has its own shape but if i were to look at water i have a beaker of water liquids they take the shape of the container whichever container you pour the liquid into it will take that shape for example you can see from beaker i am going to pour it into a test tube and that's it see in this case it is taking the shape of the beaker while in this case it takes the shape of the test tube so liquids do not have a fixed shape they take the shape of the container gases shape of a gas once again because gas particles they move freely in the surroundings they also do not have a fixed shape they are free to move which makes both your liquids and gases fluidic they are fluids they are free to move although liquids are not as free to move as gases so 
important point to keep in mind here is the arrangement of solids which is responsible for their definite shape and definite boundary in liquids there is not so much of a order as you can see from the diagram what can happen is one layer of particles they can slide over another layer of particles because they are not compactly present and it is not in a correct order so they can slide over one another which causes the movement once again let's talk about the volume of a solid volume of a solid is also fixed why because the boundaries the boundaries are fixed so the volume will not change in a solid in case of a liquid in case of a liquid also volume is fixed so a key point to remember here is liquids they don't have a fixed shape but they have a fixed volume the volume is constant it is fixed let me do a very simple activity here to show this particular point what we are going to do is i am going to measure water in this beaker up to let us say 50 ml you can see the markings here i am going to add till 50 ml always look at the reading to your eye level and then i am going to add this into this test tube right 50 ml in this test tube and i need the 50 ml in this beaker now you see in both the test tube as well as the beaker 50 ml here 50 ml here so the volume is fixed but shape is different so liquids have a fixed volume but they don't have a fixed shape right very simple to understand for this graph on the other hand when you look at gases gases they don't have a fixed volume so very simple to prove that take a container take a container and let us say you flush in 1 liter of a gas 1 liter of any gas let us say the capacity of the container is 10 liter it's a big container and you are adding 1 liter of a gas as you would imagine the gas particles because of their free movement they would occupy the entire container the entire container so volume is not fixed in a way now it has filled the entire 10 liter container so volume is not fixed in a gas the next point here is compressibility compressibility what do you mean by compressibility press which means when you apply a force on something what effect do you observe for for instance in case of a solid let us say this is my solid tester or okay i have a solid tester and i apply a force on it i am trying to apply a force on this and as you can see there is not much effect that is observed why because in solids the particles cannot come any more closer why because already the spaces between the particles is very less when you apply force particles 
start moving, but if they don't have anywhere to go, they will not be easily compressed. Therefore, solids have least compressibility. They have least compressibility. You might wonder, in that case, on application of force, won't some solids change their shape? Yes, they do, definitely. But the important point here is to remember, for example, you have a spoon, a steel spoon that we use. When you apply force, when you apply force, it bends and it changes its shapes. Right? So, what's happening here? We said earlier that solids maintain a fixed shape or a definite shape when when any force is not applied on them right but when a force is applied on a solid if it changes the shape what is happening here what is happening is the order of arrangement of particles is altered due to the force the original shape of the particle it remains as it is particles do not change their shape the original shape they do not change the when you bend the spoon you change the change that you see in the shape is due to the change in the order of arrangement so keep that in mind so in general solids are least compressible moving on to liquids as you know they have got some amount of space in between them so when you apply a force they can compress but not as much as a gas in case of a gas gases are highly compressible very very compressible for example the LPG cylinder that we use at our homes for cooking what is that liquefied petroleum gas right so what is there in the container is nothing but your gas this gas has been compressed high pressure has been applied on that due to which the particles come closer come closer why do the particles come closer because there is lot of space available in between so when you apply pressure particles come close which means gases are highly compressible another point here is why are the cylinders so heavy they weigh anywhere between 14 to 16 kilograms very very heavy why why can't your liquefied petroleum gas be filled in lightweight plastic cans the reason is when you compress the gas the gases on their own they have very high kinetic energy they move around randomly due to this random motion they always collide with one another they collide with one another not only that they also apply force on the walls of the container they hit with high pressure high force so if it were a plastic container it would cause heavy damage to the container and the gas might leak out for that reason for that reason lpg cylinders are made up of your solid steel or iron very very heavy so that they can absorb the pressure exerted by the gas particles so Solids are least compressible because they have got very less space between them. Gases are highly compressible. The next point, the ability of diffusion, diffusibility. We know that diffusion is nothing but the intermixing of different particles. When two particles intermix on their own, we call that as diffusion. So in that case, solids are they do not undergo diffusion. The diffusion rate is negligible. Why? Because for anything to intermix on their own, particles should move, which means they should possess kinetic energy. Solids, as we know, they possess very less kinetic energy.
therefore they cannot move on their own hence diffusion is very less on the other extreme we have gases which have very high amount of kinetic energy therefore they can randomly move they can diffuse they can mix very easily for example oxygen is present under water why because of diffusion gases can easily diffuse under water which helps our aquatic animals liquids moderate for example you can mix oil in water or you can mix water in water or alcohol in water liquids they have what slightly more diffusion than solids lesser than that in a gas fifth point of differentiation between a solid liquid and gas is that of density what about the density of a solid liquid and gas before we understand the difference we should understand the meaning or definition of density what is density density is given by the formula d equals to mass divided by volume mass divided by volume what does this mean for a given volume how much mass can be packed for a particular object for example you see in this case here the volume is almost the same volume the area is almost the same if not much you can add a little more so and let us say the volume here right for a given constant volume in which case is the mass higher mass per unit volume you see in solids due to the compact arrangement of particles for a given volume the number of particles are more are very high compared to a liquid it is lesser and in a gas it is very very less so just imagine let us say if every particle weighs 1 gram the volume is same the volume is same for solids number of particles are more liquids are less gases very very less so in this case there are around two particles in this volume so mass per unit volume will be 2 gram let us say volume is 1 liter so 2 gram in 1 liter i am just giving you an example in this case there are 5 9 14 19 19 particles are there so 19 gram per 1 liter and in the first case 7 Order twenty eight. This is slightly more. So I have to draw one more layer volume wise. Right? Thirty six seven six thirty five thirty five grams per one liter. This is just for example. Solid particles are very small and they are very very closely packed. So for the same amount of volume, the mass is very high in solid. very less in gas which means density of a solid is very high density in a gas is very less because in a unit volume number of particles mass is very less that is why when you put a because solids are highly dense density is very high when you add a solid to a liquid or a gas the mass being very high it will sink for example if i were to put a coin in this coin is solid water is liquid if i put it because it is highly yes. dense it will sink so that is about your density so we have 5 plus 3 eight differences between a solid liquid and gas eight plus this two Around nine differences we have. 
in a solid liquid and gas let us quickly summarize this solids have high spaces between them greater number of spaces gases will have very less space between them solids have high force of attraction gases have very less force of attraction solids have very less kinetic energy gases have very high amount of kinetic energy liquids have everything in moderation in between that of a solid and a liquid in terms of shape solids have definite shape and the order of arrangement of particles is very compact there's a high there's a uniform order of arrangement and because of that solids are rigid they are not easily alterable the shape liquids on the other hand they don't have a fixed shape but they take the shape of the container and they are free to flow so they are fluids gases don't have a fixed shape and they are also free to move for example your air volume solids are fixed volume liquids also have a fixed volume gases do not have a fixed volume compressibility due to the lesser number of spaces available between the particles you cannot compress a solid least compressible gases are highly compressible for example lpg cng diffusibility because kinetic energy is very less solids cannot mix on their own negligible amount of least amount of diffusion gases so show high amount of diffusion and in terms of density solids are highly dense gases are least dense so that is about our three states of matter why some are solids why some others are liquids why some others are gases and what are the differences between a solid liquid and gas thank you